Oh, they're all yours. Or none of them are. Pick one. Pick one. Either view allows peace. So we're in um, Raja Yoga Sutras. We're studying in the mornings the Raja Yoga Sutras, or otherwise often known as the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Bhagavan Patanjali is attributed the authorship, and this is the <coughs> the one uh, mystical path, Raja Yoga, the mystical path. Um, you know, mystic. Mystic in one way you could you could hear like mysterious, but mystic the mystics or the mystical path is um, describing um, the um, union direct union with the absolute, um, not through an intermediary, but direct union. And so the yogis are really mystics in this way and describing the union with the highest self. Yoga itself is union with the highest self. And so Raja Yoga is this particular path of control of the mind. Chitta Vritti Narodaha, the stilling of the whirlpools, the thought waves in the mind. Okay, so here's where we are. We introduced gunas yesterday here. And um, we have varying experience with the concept of gunas sitting here. So here was the introduction. We had a long commentary, beautiful commentary from Swamiji yesterday. The scene, the scene, that which is seen, as opposed to the seer, that who sees it. Um, so Drake and Drishya, the relationship between the scene and the seer. The scene is of the nature of the gunas. And then the three gunas are described, and he uses a, use a little different word in Sanskrit from what we're normally familiar with. We would normally hear um, sattva, rajas, tamas. And here we were introduced to hmm, these words. Prakasha as, um, as illumination or um, clarity instead of the word sattva, which we would normally hear. Kriya, for action or passion, as opposed to the word that we would normally hear, rajas. And then uh, stita is the word that's used for inertia, and tamas is what we would be a little more familiar with. Stita? Stita, stita. And it's, and stita. it's inertia is translated inertia. there? Inertia. Meaning is the same. The same. This, the, this was part of the discussion yesterday with... Yeah. Swamiji introducing the words that are used in Sanskrit in the sutra itself. Because the words are so layered. Stita, stita, yes. So layered. So, but effectively the same for all intents. For our practical work, it's the same. So it's what's being said is that the scene, which is everything from the thoughts that I'm seeing out to this body, and then to you. The objective view, not the subjective view. The subjective view and I are same, but the but the objects here arrayed in front of you. These are also the scene. Yes, make sense. Yes. It's very simple with Sharon, but but the but it's profound because we're so identified with the scene. Right? We're so identified with what we see, taking the scene to be who we are. That's why catching it is profound catch it. So the scene is of the nature of the gunas, and those are the three, here translated as illumination, activity, and inertia, <clears throat> and consist of the elements and sense organs whose purpose is to provide both experiences and liberation to the purusha. And the purusha is, is the spirit, but also the seer, the seer. So your own true nature, tatvamasi, thou art that. So you are the seer, you are not the scene. And this is established, and so we start here this morning. It's this reminder from the from the sutra yesterday. Okay. And continuing to describe the gunas, that which is seen, that which is experienced, considered as the world, but really considered as 
each of us have our own worlds, you know. Uh, and of course, we experience the world based upon our own inner nature, which is thought nature, which is thought nature. It's not, a, it's not some absolute. From the absolute sense, I'm seeing the thoughts. And the thoughts are in a particular groove, right? Particular program. They're in a particular groove. They run a certain way. And according to the way they, and they don't stay the same way, right? From moment to moment, day to day. So I say, I'm angry, then I say I'm happy, then I say I'm sad, then I say I'm longing for my mate or whatever it is, right? So those, that's not really the I. That's really the scene. But it's confused with the I. But of course it's the scene, because if you were really angry, you'd be that all the time. Mm -hmm. If you were really sad, you would be that all the time. Mm -hmm. If you were really that, you see, whatever you are, you have to be all the time. Anything that moves is not you, it can't be you, because you're aware of the changes. You're aware of the changes. You're aware that I, there was a time when I was happy. So just to know that means you're aware that now I'm not. So you're not describing yourself. You can't be describing yourself. Because I observe <coughs> sadness, I observe anger, and then I observe happiness. Right? So you can't be that. If you were that, then you wouldn't have any ability to notice a change. Hmm. So the thoughts move and you stay the same. Because you see the change in them. How fast are we traveling right now? 172,000 miles per hour. Like space. that, like that. And that's just the rotational speed of the Earth. But you have no, no relation to it. Because everything is moving at that speed. Everything that you're looking at, everything that you're touching, mm -hmm. everything that you're... All of the thinginess is moving along with you, so you don't have any concept of it. Only if you were to stop and stand back from the, from the earth for a moment and be stable relative to the earth could you see that the earth is actually moving. And where you thought you were standing still, you were actually moving at 172,000 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So in the same way, only standing back and being the observer are you able to see that it changed. So, of course, you are the observer because you can see that it changed. So, the scene, the scene starts with the thoughts and then goes out into body, into the objects, the external objects, the objects that are external to the thought. But we experience them according to, in two ways, we experience them at some level because of their own nature, the things but also we experience them according to our own thought nature at the time. That's why uh, a person at one point that I see, I can be happy to see, and another point, very upset about seeing them. Mm -hmm. Or an object might seem to be very attractive in one moment, and some days later it might not be attractive. And, that, and of course the attraction is not actually in the object. Mm -hmm. right? It's, uh, it's Raghavesha, it's in the mind. So the stages of the gunas, these, the natures, the changing natures of the things, are specific, non-specific, defined, and undefinable. So scientist Bhagavan um, Patanjali here is describing the, the stages of the gunas, and we'll need a little help with this. So, so Swamiji will, will give some guidance. He says, here Patanjali analyzes Prakriti. Prakriti is the nature. Nature. Mother nature, we could say like that. But the, but the nature of things. What does it mean, the nature of things? What are the things made up of? What are the things made up of? What is the nature of them? What do they do? What are their qualities? How do they perform? Do they perform? Do they not perform? If you, if you say boo to them, how do they respond to that? Like this. This will respond in some way, but maybe not as gross response as the, as the human being. So the nature of it, 
the nature of it? What is the nature of my mind? What is the nature of my body? What is the nature of this photograph over here? Well, it tends to be fairly telosic because it just sits, sits there. <laughs> But it's fine. That's not judgmental, right? It's, it's doing its role very well. They, they all get up at night and do quite a lot. <laughs> they get up at night when we're, we're, we're being, we're when nobody, we're being Tomasic. <laughs> when nobody's looking, they're busy. Uh, and if you look at the animal world, you, you catch it. Because the, what is the nature of a cow? To now, they have different personalities, but they have a very similar nature. Sorry? As grazing. Grazing, grazing. right. So they're kicked back. Tamas sattva. Not a lot of rajas in them. Not a lot of, not a lot of passion in the, in the cow. Although I've seen them play from time to time. When I was walking, there were a group of cows that put on a play for me. So it was almost amazing. And if their babies are, are you know, they're, when it comes to their babies, they're very, they're actually pretty passionate when it comes to that. We're talking about action. Yeah. Passion is has a different connotation. A so different. we say, so then we can use the word action to try to get it. They get very active, I see, yeah. I see different where the, where the I lion, see. where the lion is much more rajas by nature, much more action by nature, although strong tamas, because it will lie about until it's time to... For a few weeks. So, so the point is, all of nature has all three of the elements in it, in some mixture, in some proportion. But you'll see the qualities in everything. You'll see it in your mind, you'll see it in this body, you'll see them in some other people that you look at. Somebody who likes to sleep mostly, you say mostly tamas is dominating the nature. Um, what's the manatee, tamas? Mm -hmm. If anybody's ever seen a tamas, they, they're they so tamasic that, that, you know, and this is terrible for them because when the boats come along with their propellers, they're so tamasic they can't do anything but lie right there yeah. and get struck by them. So it's a terrible thing. And then there are the then there are the critters that are going most of the time. And so okay. But is it terrible for them? To, are they not going to a better place when the animals? In the moment, it is. From their perspective, for a moment or two, it certainly is. Yeah. It's very painful. Mm. And it might be a so, few. And, then, and it's a good catch. I mean, I'm not providing an absolute perspective when I say that. I'm, but I have the ability to experience as they do for a moment. Mm. And it's... Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the same way as the, as the squirrel and the hawk out back. You know, from, it's all a question of perspective, right? Any injury any one of us sustains isn't very enjoyable. So, um, but from an absolute sense, the play goes on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the commentary on, on this, and this isn't something we normally deal with. The stages of the bunas are specific, non-specific, defined, and undefinable. <coughs> I'm not actually discussing the qualities here, it's a little different, so... Here Patanjali analyzes Prakriti a little more. He divides all of nature into four stages, going in reverse order from the way Patanjali expresses them. First, there is the unmanifested, or avyakta stage, which is nature in a static or undefinable condition. So in the universe, science would know that as um, black, dark energy. Dark energy. So dark energy in the universe is that which is not yet formed. It simply has some existence, but it's undefined and undefinable. Um, and in the same way, at the if, if you look at if you look at your thoughts, you see that there are tendencies that are not visible. So they lie in unmanifested form until some sense object comes into contact with the tendency. So there might be hatred for a particular thing or a particular individual. It lies dormant, unmanifest. Uh, but then has the potential to manifest when the thing is coming to contact with. Uh, so first is the unmanifested stage. A slightly manifested stage is next. And that's actually the one that I just referred to. The third is a more developed stage where nature forms into the subtle senses, buddhi and mind. And the fourth stage is the gross objects, 
which we can hear, feel, see, touch, smell, and taste. Normally, we only understand things we can see. However, if we develop a subtler perception, we can also see the subtler things. For instance, we can see a flower, but we can only sense the smell rather than see it. Even the smell is matter, though very subtle, and if we have developed subtle enough perception, we can see it emanating like a magnetic force. Although each individual has an aura, we normally see bodies but not the auras, the colors of their astral bodies, but we can develop the subtle senses to see them. So we know that, right? I don't know if any, don't put up your hand, I don't know if anyone here has that, has that ability, but certainly you've met people that can see auras. Yeah. So you know that they exist. In fact, the, the in Soviet days, there was a great effort in the science community to, to map it, to understand it, and all this Carolian photography and like that is photographs of the astral, of the, of the aura. So, so that's what's described then, is, is this, uh, is of the gunas, of the three types of nature, or the three components of nature, clarity, action, and inertia, of those three, with each of them, there are these um, stages. Specific, where they're completely defined, non-specific, where they're not quite defined, defined and undefinable. Okay. Next, 20. Just introduce. The seer. So now we've been talking about the scene. He's been walking us through the scene and trying to see what the scene is. And now he speaks to the seer. Who is it that sees? The seer is nothing but the power of seeing which, although pure, appears to see through the mind. The seer is nothing but the power of seeing which, although pure, appears to see through the mind. And so we'll come back to that in the morning. But that is where... And we've started this second chapter um, with the discussion of yoga and, and, and a bit more about samadhi. The, the, and we're coming into the practices. And then we went to the kleshas, what are the obstacles to meditation? And we've discussed the five obstacles to meditation. And, and just to put it in perspective, Sage Patanjali is drilling through this now, the obstacles to meditation. He's, he's helping us to understand how to clear ourselves of the obstacles. Right? He's already said that the obstacles can be gross or subtle. The op First of all, the obstacles are five. We name them. You want to do? Um, ignorance. Yeah. Delusion. Ignorance and then ignorance and delusion are one. Okay. Ignorance, delusion, the same. Mm -hmm. And then egoism. Very good. Mm -hmm. Uh, one thing comes before, very good, attachment, mm -hmm. and then anger related to that, and then I mean, craving for the earth, craving to the, to the body, craving to the body, yeah. craving of the body, uh, craving of the physical life. So, and we've walked through; those are all each related to the other. From ignorance comes the idea of who I am, from ego, the idea of what I'm missing, from the idea of what I'm missing, what I lack in order to be happy, from that idea comes desire, craving, attachment. So really the same as those are introduced. From that comes anger, and naturally, naturally, because what you really want isn't the object being craved or attached to, right? So the object can't give it, so anger will naturally come. It's just, it's said to be a part of desire, anger and desire, in this way, worldly desire is said to be identical, said to be the same. Because it'll always, just as action and reaction are the same, in this case, when an object is craved for, anger is there, but it's there in subtle form. 
until the object is taken away, or the or the object isn't isn't given, or the object didn't do it. And one of those three is always the case, right? So therefore, anger is there. And then, uh, and then I'm not done yet. <laughs> the craving for the physical body. And so we've come from there, the establishment of the kleshas. What are the obstacles to meditation? What are the obstacles to being in one's own self? What are the obstacles to peace? What are the obstacles to being in peace all the time? What are the obstacles to happiness? What, what prevents me from being happy all the time, regardless of what happens? Because of, the, because of these, Be starting with delusion, coming into this craving, this identification is missing something, and then the craving, and then... The anger, uh, and in anger we completely lose ourselves, and then the, the holding on to this physical body, the desire to, to prolong this physical birth. So now he's describing, stepping us through, if we can see it, he's breaking it down, and he's saying, look at what you're holding on to. And that's this, that's the gunas, the scene, that which is seen. And now he's starting to describe the nature of the seer. And he comes directly from here into the practices. We're a couple of days away from getting to the getting to Ashtanga, the introduction of the of the cure, <laughs> the cure from the Raja Yoga perspective. Okay. Any questions or comments? Oh, John. Uh, I think I just got out of this was it's just the passing show. Oh my God! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My God, yes. So act, act in a beneficial manner, but don't let anything here stick to you. Don't let anything here disturb you because it's a passing show. Oh. <laughs> mm. Paramatsa Yogananda. Um, this just really, when I, when I was seeking something that I could hold on to because everything had crashed and burned. Um, uh, somehow Yogananda came into the came into the field. And I was just craving listening to him, listening to him. And there, on the SRF website, there are a number of snippets of talks, different talks that he would give. And one of them, he's talking about exactly this. He says, in a booming voice, he said, this world is a passing show. He said, I went to a cinema and I saw the movie on the screen. And I saw everyone be disturbed about what was happening on the screen. But then the movie stopped. And everyone looked at themselves. And they saw that they were fine. <laughs> so this entirety of this world, it is a passing show. Everything here comes and goes. It's the great movie, the great great theater. And even the scientists get it today. They speak of this universe as a hologram, for gosh sakes, a moving hologram. So, action is not to be negated because action leads to freedom. Proper action leads to freedom. Proper action, beneficial action, leads to freedom. So action is not to be negated. But the, but the results that, that come are to be let go of. Om Kopal. Oh, I was going to say, uh, I found personally uh, most of my anger would come from uh, people not behaving the way that I wanted them to or like yeah. causing me not to be happy. So for me, it was not only objects, but it was this yoga of relationships, not knowing how to live amongst people, yes, and yes, then yes. craving to live alone, and then being angry because I can't do that. And then it's right. Just, Yes, yes, absolutely. <coughs> and, and, and as you describe this, what comes, the people that you're describing, they're objects. And the issue is that you're seeing them as objects. You're not seeing who they really are. And, and if, if you have this most subtle view, which is to see the absolute underlying nature, the Buddha nature, as it were, or Brahman in everyone, then no one could possibly disturb. Because it's your own self that you see. And that permeates. 
and that permeates at that point. So, and that's what's happening is as you dive deeper in through the practices and, and through self-study, self-analysis and study of Shastra, is less and less, yes? More and more undisturbed. Because the, because the names and forms, they're just a passing show. And, and, and we're putting all of this reality into the names and forms, but the names and forms are ephemeral. They're constantly changing. They don't have any independent reality. They have a reality, but the reality is that which underlies. Mm -hmm. So exactly, exactly. So it's treating the, treating the self as an object in this way, only relating to it as an object. Okay, we'll close with final prayers on our page 80. And we catch as we go through this, right, the suffering that comes from this. As each time as we take a step coming through the coming through the sutras, we see that in prior states, this experience of pain, we see what it comes from. It's misidentification. Mm. And so we see the cure too. And we step towards the cure. We practice the cure on a daily basis, of course. Okay. Oh. Om Trayam Patam Yajamahe Sukhandim Vishivadanam or by Rukameva Vandana, Mrichor Mukshya Hamritat, Om Triumbatam Yajamahe, Sugandim Pushti Vardana, Or by Rukameva Vandana, Mrichor Mukshya Hamritat, Om Triumbatam Yajamahe, Sugandim Pushti Vardana, Or by Rukameva Vandana, Mrichor Mukshya Hamritat, Om Shanti 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 Om Peace 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 Adorable Lord of Mercy and Love Let us abide in Thee forever and ever Om Balo Sakuru Shivananda Rajaki Om Balo Sri Sami Vishnu Devananda Rajaki Let's rise for our tea.